Now open your Bibles to the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. I'm going to show you something now that the Lord showed me quite some time ago. It shall come to pass, if you'll hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all of his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set, set thee high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake you, if you'll hearken or listen to the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed, blessed. Look at the eighth verse. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses or barns and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. He shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. He has sworn unto thee if you shall keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways and all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. They shall be afraid of you. Why? Because you're wealthy and God is making you wealthy and they hated, the devil hated that. Amen. Now then, Donald John Trump a multi-billionaire, the Lord his God had blessed him. His dad taught him in the construction business. His grandmother was part of a huge revival in Scotland. That's the reason he liked to go to Scotland and, and, and buy golf properties. She taught them the Bible. And his mother gave him his Bible and taught him as a young boy coming up. Amen. And his dad told him, he said, look, when you go on the job, don't go to the foreman. He'll tell you whatever he wants you to believe and know. He said, don't do that. Go to the working men. Go to the bricklayer. Go to those and talk to them. and They'll tell you what's going on there. so afraid of him. He was in a rented limousine one night. A woman driver. She suddenly had a blowout. And it's raining. She got outside and opened the trunk of that limousine and she didn't know what to do about it. And there was a man pulled over in his truck and fixed it and put the thing back in the trunk. He didn't know who was in the limo. Mr. Trump inquired and found out who he was and paid off his house. The working man was his, his best friend. Another time he's on the golf course and he saw an Hispanic man out there raking the, one of the sand traps. So he just walked over there to him, shook hands with him and, and thanked him for working on that golf course so hard for him. And he blessed him and his family. but he's a billionaire. You know what the billionaire is? That's a million, million, three of them. And it just kept growing because of the way he handled his business. And when it came time to him, for him to buy the, the, the airplane that he really needed, he just went to Boeing and bought a 757, paid for it. 
Oh, and all the, all the social media just went squirrely. Oh, it just makes me sick. Envy. He sent his soul in that airplane and giving it all to the poor. That's his airplane, not mine. He had the money. Now, in our airplane that belongs to this ministry, we have seat belts that look gold, but they're not. <laughs> no, they're not gold. They're, they're, they're plated, but it's not gold plated. In his 757, they are gold. <laughs> and the reason he did that was in order to do business and get in his airplane and, and go to altitude and stay up there with businessmen and they can't get out. <laughs> that reminds me of the queen of the South that came to Solomon and he just showed her around and she said, my breath was removed from me. Oh, at the richness of his God and his wisdom. Prosperity was God's idea from the beginning. Amen. Amen because poverty is under the curse. So we've learned now that the curse is threefold. Spiritual death comes from not knowing Jesus as your Lord. Spiritual death, sickness and disease and poverty. It's all right there from the 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th chapters of Deuteronomy, I call heaven and earth to record against you this day that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore you choose life that both you and your seed may live, that you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice and that you may cleave unto him for he is your life and he is the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore by covenant unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. Yeehaw. <laughs> choose it. Life and death, blessing and cursing. You choose life that you may live. Amen. It's our choice. You don't start this with the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy with the blessing and the curse. You go to the 27th. We're going to talk about this big tomorrow. But in the 27th, Moses and the priests and the Levites spoken to all of Israel saying, take heed and hearken, O Israel, this day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Moses charged the people the same day saying, these shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people when you are come over Jordan. Simeon and Levi, Judah, Issachar. So the tribe of Judah from which Jesus came was on the blessing side. <laughs> These shall stand on Mount Ebal to curse Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulon, Dan, and Naphtali. Those two mountains, Shechem was right in the valley in the middle. One of them is alkaline. It is so alkaline that we have pictures of that and we'll probably go into that tomorrow. Maybe much. There they are. That's Mount Gerizim. That's the blessing mountain. That's Shechem. Mount Ebal is the curse mountain. See how bare it is? 
It's alkaline. Nothing grows on it. All of those people were there in the middle and up on the sides of those mountains. It was, these people came out of Egypt. They had a covenant, but they didn't have any idea they'd been in slavery so long. So it's show and tell. <laughs> They're shouting back and forth, back and forth. And therefore obey the voice. Moses charged the people saying, you shall own and so forth. And you're going to stand on there and over there on that other mountain. And the Levites speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that makes any grave in his They said, Amen. I mean, a couple of million people shouting back and forth. There. They're on that mountain. Hallelujah. So, now then, oh, I was about to mess up here. Thank you, Jesus. So now, thank you, Lord. Faith for prosperity. Now, faith is the catalyst for these covenants. Remember now, Hebrews 11, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? He's the blessing God. He's the blessing God. And faith is the connection to these covenants. And when we become covenant minded and blood minded where Jesus is concerned and we have a covenant with the same most high God Amen. so that he that abides under the shadow of the Almighty, right there. He that abides under the shadow of Shaddai. Amen. Abides, lives there. Now Moses wrote the 90th Psalm where we find 70 or 80. He wrote then the 91st Psalm and said, with long life, he'll satisfy you and show you his salvation. Amen. That's the soldier's song. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. With long life, he will satisfy you and show you his salvation. Well, I went after that in a huge way. When, when I entered covenant with Jesus to live to be 120 years old. And so then I had a lot of business to take care of. And so I began to speak to my hair. It started turning gray. Well, I went to him about this and I said, I, I don't care. It's scriptural to, to become gray headed. But you said you're doing this because of the word of faith. So I'm going to talk to my hair. I started talking to it and it, it started becoming gray all around. And I said, no, 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 no. I'm not having that. No, 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 no. Stand there in the, in the mirror and look at it and say, gray hair, bye. <laughs> and it's gone. It's gone. I said, I, it, it's up to you. If you want a bald-headed preacher, okay. <laughs> you want a white-haired preacher, okay. But we're doing this on the word of faith. And I didn't hear anything. I said, you hear what I said? <laughs> so 
So I kept, I kept going at him over that. And he said, well, yeah. He said, I don't have to answer that. You know what to do. Use your mouth. <laughs> Put your faith on that hair. Yes, I did it tonight in the hotel room. Stand there to look at it. And I said, Harry, you are good looking. <laughs> Amen. 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 I found a hairspray that didn't have any alcohol in it. It's manufactured right there close to my, our house. Amen. Amen. Because this is my testimony. Yes, <laughs> and, the, and the reason, the, the, the flat physical is a side issue here. And I know Brother Roberts got where well, he got, before he got through, his, his legs wouldn't hold him up. Mm. So he would have to preach in a chair. Mm. Well, I just went before the Lord and I said, I'm not going in a chair. I'll work out just as hard as I possibly can and I will preach standing up with, yes. and I'll do it with a full head of hair. Yes. Hallelujah. By faith. By faith. Yes. Go to the 11th yes. chapter of the book of Hebrews. And the first time I read that, I went in there, I said, Gloria, look at this. Because when we got saved, I thought, well, man, we got to have some of this faith stuff. We, 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 we go, I said, Gloria, we got to have this. How do we get this? Do you have any ideas? She said, no, I don't know how. She said, but she said yeah, that's just, I mean, this stuff is good. So I read the 11th chapter of Hebrews, and I went in there and said, Gloria, I found the Hall of Fame. <laughs> the Faith Hall of Fame. We started reading that and then go look up all of those scriptures about Noah and Abraham and, and all, 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 all of them. Studied each one of them and the faith that they exercised. And then you get down to the end of that chapter and it says, and he's done a better thing for us. I said, how could it be any better? Well, here I am, 85 and a half years old, and I've figured out it's better. I'm telling you, one Sunday, the Lord reminded me of this today. One Sunday, I had come in, and we, you know, I watched church there in the garden room. And uh, so I came in there and watching church and and I sit there and watch church and I text Terry and I said, tell him to not do this. <laughs> so she's, you know, <laughs> and then she'll just stand up there and say, well, uh, daddy said, <laughs> you know, I don't know whether they appreciate that much or not, but anyway. <laughs> so um, Jan, Gloria's sister came by that morning and took her to lunch. And George had just preached a, mm, ah, and it stirred me up over healing and stirred me up over the third chapter of the book of Acts and the, the power of God hit and ah, I got so excited and, and I, I went back to my closet and I said, you know what? I'm 80 years old. I'm actually 80 years old. <laughs> and Gloria got home. I said, Gloria, you realize I'm 80 years old? She said, yeah. <laughs> she said, I knew that because I'm 75. So, and as I told you, I have a large closet, walk-in closet. And I still had my pajamas and my robe on. And I was back there in that closet and I'm going like this. I'm 80 years old. -hoo -hoo -hoo. I'm 80 years old. And the word of the Lord came on me and I just stopped right where I was. And he rose up on the inside of me and he said, you listen to me. 80 is your new 30 and you're starting over again. And so, 
for the aviation insurance company. They came out and watched me, well, our insurance agent came out and watched me work out. And we videoed it. And he's kind of right out. Well, I had him on, a trainer, and checked my metabolic age, the age my body thinks it is. <laughs> on your diet, amount of exercise, and, and all that. My body thinks it's between 35 and 37 years old. <laughs> now, <laughs> that just amazes me. And I got short of breath over in a prison and and for Mike Barber, never did have any pain. I, I could kind of feel that my heart rate was up high. So I got checked. And they said, well, you need a pacemaker. And I said, well, Lord, I'll just get that pacemaker by faith. He said, no. And he used an aviation term with me. He said, you're too far behind the power curve. He said, take the pacemaker by faith. So I prayed over it. So the, then they, <laughs> the doctor had me on the table. <laughs> they don't put you completely out. They have to build a pouch for this thing. Well, I thought it was going to be about that big. Well, come to find out it was, but the battery's about that big. Yeah. Yeah. And so I said, well, pacemaker, you belong to me now. That means you belong to God and you're in a Holy Ghost body. Amen. And you're going to work right. Yes. Well, it had a defibrillator in it. <laughs> well, the FAA has had, it, had history with pacemakers, but not with that defibrillator, which meant that, as the, and then I got on that treadmill and I would lay hands on this thing and bless it. You're mine. You're in my body and the Holy Ghost is in there with you. And my body's dedicated to Jesus. Amen. And go back to all those scriptures. And talking about the prosperity of God. And that he, he built this planet for his family. Amen. And he said, all of the gold is mine and I give it to you. What is man, the angel said, that you visit him? What is man that you visit him? That other bunch that was here before, I can prove it to you from the Bible. And uh, the whole the whole dinosaur group went down. And we're against those now disembodied spirits. So, now I said that to say this. <laughs> that was funny because they didn't put me all the way out. And this lady came in there and said, Mr. Copeland, do you snore? I said, how would I know I'm asleep? <laughs> I said, no. I said, Gloria says I don't snore. So I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, no problem here. And that doctor was doing this thing through a magnified x-ray thing. And he's building that pouch for this thing. And I thought, this thing is bigger than I thought it was. And he heard a little, he, he, he said, oh, Mr. Copeland, did it hurt you? I said, yeah, you did. <laughs> and he said, okay, okay. Thank. I said, that's okay. <laughs> We're talking back and forth while he's building this thing. I'm laying there on my back like this. <laughs> Came out of it laughing. I get this thing. I got this little machine in me. Yeah. Yeah. 
I have a little machine sewed to my heart. Ooh. I thought, how cool is that? <laughs> now I got to get back on that treadmill. And so I got on the treadmill and I set that thing off a couple of times. Boy, I mean, it like crossed my eyes a couple of times. I started training again and training again and working at it and working at it. And, and, and that, that's when I heard the Lord say that you're, I, I sacrificed my body for you. Now you're sacrificing your body for mine. And so you can stay here until I come or until you're 120 years old. And so I got up and got on that treadmill again, started working out, pushed it up and up and up and up and up. And I took that Bruce protocol. I'll tell you what, that's a stress test of stress tests. Isn't it, Doc? Yes, sir. Oh, I'll get your attention, brother. <laughs> With the defibrillator in there, praying in tongues, praising God on a treadmill. <laughs> and that treadmill, of course, my treadmill, the one that Keith and Phyllis gave me is a whole lot nicer treadmill than that old medical treadmill I got on. That thing is rough as a cob. Mm. And they, you know, they brought me in there <laughs> and they, they laid me down on my back. I'm wired up, look like I was going to space. <laughs> and, you know, EKGs every little bit, laid on my back and they, and took an EKG and a setup, took an EKG, and it got out and did 20 jumping jacks, took an EKG, got up and had me all wired up. This thing's nine minutes long. So I got on there and started out, and uh, I had trained praising God at the same time until it was no problem. I was working out at the Bruce Protocol. Now, all of this is important in anything in life. Mm -hmm. Prepare, Amen. train for it. Yes. You're be, bless you. You stay ready for inflation all the time. Amen. Keep my seed sown. Amen. 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 Oh yes. And I just pray for my partners all the time. And when it started KCBC, I said, well, uh, the class ring is only going to be one like it. Never be another one. It's going to have, it's going to be real gold and have a diamond in it for the valedictorian of the first class. And she's sitting right there. <laughs> Glory <laughs> to God. Yes. I mean, <laughs> hallelujah. That ring. Well, so just train at it, stay with it, stay ahead of it. And I got done. They took my blood pressure every three minutes. You know, just standing there walking on that treadmill. And everything, I mean, I mean, they're looking at me on the machine and everything. And it was just another treadmill day. <laughs> Preparation by faith mm -hmm. and meet the challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And got done. They said, are you all right? I said, oh yeah. Well, <laughs> and they said, well, you're just fine, Mr. Copeland. <laughs> So then they took me back then and a little bit later they went, I had to go back because all this is for the FAA. So I went back and there's a consultant here in Fort Worth and he is an FAA, he's a cardiologist, he, I mean, he's a consultant to the FAA. So I went over there to his office and they got to get back on the treadmill again wow. because they're going to shoot some stuff in my arm so they can see my heart. So I got back up on the treadmill and so she said, well, We'll, we'll just do this probably, you know, three or four minutes be all right. So I got on there and they kept speeding it up, and speeding it up, and speeding it up. She said, Mr. Copeland, uh, could, could, uh, could you stay 
on the treadmill a little while longer, we can't get your heart rate up enough to test it. <laughs> I said, crank it up. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Finally got it up there where it belonged. I found out I'd had a heart attack sometime and didn't know it. I had one blocked artery and it had bypassed itself. Yeah. Wow. I just needed a pacemaker. <laughs> so, call the tech rep out that manufactured this thing, this little machine. He paired up with it <laughs> and got the reports, all of the reports of that, of what this thing's been doing all the time. There it is, comes out of it. I mean, this thing's checking me all the time. And so it, there it all is, there it is, yeah. Oh yeah, hey, here's where you did the Bruce Protocol, I guess, yeah? I said, yes, sir. Oh, oh he said, oh man, this looks good. He said, you don't, you, don't, you don't need that defibrillator anymore, do you? I said, no, he said, okay, I'll turn it off. So he turned that off and I have a card that I carry with me all the time and uh, sent that to the FAA that I did the Bruce protocol with the defibrillator in there. I don't need it anymore. So they turned it off. Faith, I'm talking about faith in God. And this works, this absolutely works faith for prosperity. Everything you will ever need is in the earth now. The world and all in it were made for his man, Adam. Praise God. Poverty and debt are under the curse. Amen. And of course, we talked about the word borrow. In Proverbs 22, 7, in Hebrews, it's joined. The, the borrower is joined to the lender. The power to get wealth, Deuteronomy 7. Let's go over there. We're in Deuteronomy right now. Let's turn there. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Nine. Let's go back and read the seventh verse. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. What did he do? He set his love on them. <sighs> For you were the fewest of all people, but because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of, of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Mm. Glory to God. He keeps covenant. He loves you and he keeps covenant with you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Now the eighth chapter. Mm -mm. Hang on, let me look. Yeah. Verse 17. Thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto your fathers as this day. He swore, it is a covenant. Wealth is part of the covenant. Yes. 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 Now, Bishop David Oyedipo. My, 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 what a man of faith. <laughs> now he, he said this, he, he said this to Gloria and to me. He said, I had no problem with the healing covenant. Mm -hmm. 
because he said, after all, these are blood covenants. And he said, I'm an African and I understand that. But he said, the prosperity. He said, uh, he said, uh, Brother Kenneth, I read your book on the laws of prosperity. And he said, I, 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 I saw it but he said, I read mama's book, The Will of God for You. And she said in her book, and he said, I read it over and over and over and over. And he said, she took me to that verse and said, prosperity is a covenant with God. And he said, I got it. And I had a visitation of the Lord. And he said, I will never, he said, I'll never pray about money again as long as I live. I get my assignment from God and I say, thank you and I'm going to do it. Amen. He said, now see all this here. This is the first time I ever met him. I said, yes, sir. Well, he said, this is stage one. And stage one cost 20 million U.S. dollars. We borrowed none. We asked for none but we just took it as a congregation and we stood on it. Yes. The money was in the bank mm. yes. and we built it without Amen. asking anybody. Yeah. Now he said, this is phase two. It's $20 million and that money's in the bank. I said, well, maybe you need to be teaching me. How about that? <laughs> So I began to read his books on prosperity. But he depended on the blood. And he told me that. He said, I am an African and I understand that every word in there is blood backed. And he said, when I read, when, when, when Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteous way of doing things first, all these things will be added to you. And so he said, I took that and believed that and said, thank you. And he began to show me what to do. And he said, I just did it. Hallelujah. Well, their church kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it just started out growing. And finally, they, there's some real estate people went out in the bush. I'm talking Africa first time we went there, some of our staff was out on the edge of the compound. <laughs> Mark, our, our TV guy, he, he's, he's there. He's, he's right there in the studio. He's, he's the, our major cameraman. And he said, Brother Kenneth, it sounded like a Tarzan movie out there where I was. <laughs> Lines roaring and all that. Big walls around that compound. <laughs> Amen. He said, I just, I get my, I get my direction. And then I pray and I begin to praise. Amen. He said, we praise and we just praise until it comes. Amen. We just praise until it comes. I said, we praise until it comes. We praise until it comes. Glory to Glory to God. Hallelujah. Brother Hagin said, if you'll praise God long enough, the spirit of worship will come. And when you get over into the spirit of worship, the glory will fall. And that's when the mighty miracles take place. Amen. Praising God worshiping God. Get on that treadmill and crank it out. Just stand there and praise God because he said that to me. I sacrificed my body for yours. Now you're sacrificing your body for mine to continue. I got that out of the, out of the book of Philippians. The apostle Paul wrote to them and he said, to die is great gain, gain, but nevertheless, 
I will stay because of you. I think he made that decision while he was writing that letter. Amen. Well, nevertheless, I will stay because of you. Otherwise, let's get out of here. I get tired of this place. <laughs> Until I get around people like you. And, and uh, so I started to tell this the other day, and, and I, I must tell you this. And I've noticed this over a period of time. That little detail bonanza. I just started thinking about, well, and I mean, well, weeks and weeks and weeks and months and months back. Now I got to thinking about that. Well, you know, I courted Gloria in one of those. I, 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 I said, Lord, what, what, what about this? Then I noticed in a magazine there, that here's some here. And I said, Lord, what, what about this? What about this? And I was looking at some, and it came up on the inside of me. Take care of my widow. What? Take care of my widow. <laughs> okay. So the broker that's longtime friend and partner, Charles Smithwick, great friend of Charles Capps and all, and he's a good pilot, and we all, you know, together. But he brokers airplanes. So I called him. I didn't say anything to him about that. And uh, I told him, I said, Charles, I kind of got an, an itch I need to scratch on a V-tail bonanza. He said, okay. He said, I'll, I'll, you know, he said, I'll check around. So he sent me pictures and thing out of the, out of a, uh, the controller magazine that advertised it. And here's this 1973 model. 1973, a V-35B Beechcraft Bonanza with a V-tail. Never had been painted. All original. Some of the avionics had been changed, of course. So, I thought, look at this. And so I was checking around. I said, Charles, what about this? And so, and so he sent me a link to the, the broker there in Alabama that had it. So Charles called me back. Now, during this time of year, it, at Oshkosh, Wisconsin, they have the, the largest aviation gathering in the world. And he said, Kenneth, um, there, she and her family, she and her family, her daughter, have gone to Oshkosh to see if maybe they can find a, a, a buyer for that bonanza. I said, what are you talking about? He said, she's a widow. <laughs> Take care of my widow. Take care of my widow. <laughs> Went over there and looked at it. And so I, first thing I did, Paul Barnett, the broker, I walked up to the wing of that airplane and just laid my Bible right there, 54th chapter of Isaiah. I said, now, Paul, here, here in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, you, you know that? I said, now, this is Jesus on, on the cross, you understand? And I said, now, here in the 54th chapter of Isaiah, I, I said, he's talking, now the Spirit of God through Isaiah is talking to the church. And he read right down here and said, the same, don't, worry about the shame of your widowhood anymore because your Redeemer is now your husband. Amen. I didn't know what he was going to say. I, had no, I never met this man in my life. He said, 
He said, Copeland, that's wonderful. Now, let me tell you in our church, he said, now, th <laughs> <laughs> this man's a strong believer. And I told him, I said, my boss is fussy about widows. He said, there's a picture. This young man, her husband was a mountain climber. He was 40 years old and he just suddenly dropped dead. She's just a young woman. And so there was some things wrong with that, with that airplane. I said, no, 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 no. I said, I don't want her paying for anything. I've, uh, you know, th this, is, this is personally mine. I don't need it. I won't play with it. <laughs> it's a keepsake between Gloria and me. I just, I just want to keep it. So, Dwayne was there. He flew it. And that little red, white, and gold Bonanza, 1973 model, is in my hair. <laughs> to bless that young widow woman. Their daughter learned how to fly and she flew the airplane with her dad. And the man that taught her how to fly was there that day. Well, all of this is going on. Well, I, you know, I just treat everybody like they're believers. Yeah. <laughs> and there's another fellow walked in there and uh, he walked over there. And it is hot. We're out there in that hanging. Everybody's sweating, you know, in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Had to land in Birmingham and then, then go over there. Anyway, he came over there. He said, Copeland, I met you years ago. I said, you did? Yeah. And I said, okay, let's get around here. We're going to pray over this thing. So I laid hands on that airplane and received it and blessed it and blessed her. There's a picture of her over there on the wall, young woman and blessed her. And then this man, this man turned over there to me and he said, Copeland, uh, he, he said, I know you're a man of prayer. I said, well, yes, sir. He said, I have somebody I really would like for you to pray for. He said, I have her on my heart. I said, let's do it. And we just caught hand and we started believing God for that woman's family and this right there in that hot, sweaty hangar. <laughs> Prospering yes. to bless people, Amen. to bless her. Now, I'm going to get to meet her one of these days, but it not until after I have that little fellow painted. And it's going to be red, white, and blue. I already have the paint scheme. And then I'm going to give her, just fly it over there and let her see it and bless her person. That's what money's for. Yes. And we, Gloria and I bought a little old house in, in Steamboat Springs. Gloria called it Bird House. It just cut a straight up and down house. All the savings we had over that, on that little old house and uh, found out the banker that owned it and I had Carl Moore was part of the ministry back there then. And he was, a, he, by profession, he was a dentist, but he was also on the board of several banks and stuff. So I got back, I looked at that house. And so went in there and I called and told Carl, I said, call this man. And here's what I want you to tell him. You tell him that Gloria and I will pray. Oh, we scrimped and saved and just, just believed God and just gathered up a hundred thousand dollars. You can't imagine. Ah, and just, I said, Carl, you tell him and I'll, the glory and I will pay him a hundred thousand cash. 
Now we found out the man that built that house was a contractor. He built it to live in. And he had it on his floor plan at the bank. And the recession hit. Ha! Have you ever heard of such a thing? <laughs> so the bank took it and they and it owed something like two hundred and forty thousand dollars on it. And I said, you tell him that I'll close any day of the week with cash money. So they're sitting there going back and forth, you know, and and so then in the gut and pack, he talked about his bank and then Carl, you know, visioning with him, they're going on. And then Carl told him what I said. And he said, he hung up on me. <laughs> I said, call him back. He said, no, 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 no. Ling, 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 ling. <laughs> you tell him. <laughs> you tell him I'm not paying any closing costs and I'm not paying any real estate free. You understand? Well, the closing cost was $500 and the real estate fee was $2,500 and I just happened to have that. <laughs> so, we bought that little house. Glory called it a birdhouse. Just stood right straight up dumb as a big lot. In 1999, I said, Gloria, I, I don't know. I, what do you think? You think I'll we'll sell that place? She said, yeah, I, I, I think so. So we were paying attention to it, and we called the woman there, very close friends of ours there, and partners of this ministry, and he's, and he's a contractor, and she's in real estate business, and told her, well, now, we had uh, that, uh, you know, we want to sell this place. The first guy that walked in there. He just walked in there, looked at it. He said, okay, I'll take it. He didn't even ask how much. He just said, I'll take it. Get out of here in 30 days. Four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Somebody said, "Don't you miss that place?" I said, "Yeah. All we have left is a whole bunch of money." <laughs> we got out. He rushed in there and dozed the whole thing down, and started over again. And like I said, that lot wasn't all that deep, but it was very wide. And he built onto the top of it. So we went up there and looked at it, and Gloria said, I can't go through another building program again. And we just built our house here out on the property. And so we walked through it and stood there and, and prayed and said, Lord, thank you. But uh, Gloria said she didn't believe she wanted to do that right now. Thank you very much. Flew back home, didn't pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. It came up for sale again. Now, you do know Creflo Dollar. <laughs> Somebody asked him, said, why is that white man your spiritual father? He said, because he gave birth to me. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> birth to spirit of faith. He said, I preach like him, but I look more like Gloria. <laughs> he got with my son, John, that he had had a pastor appreciation day. So he said, John, we need to have a Gloria Kenneth Copeland appreciation. 
And we need to get this out to preachers and so forth around. They didn't say anything to us about it. Nothing. <laughs> In the minister's conference, I walked out there to preach and they walked out with this huge check about this big for $2 million. Money had come in from all over the country. I was speechless. I just stood there and said, huh, can I preach now? I had to go back and apologize in a letter to everybody. I don't know. So now we're in this larger house. Oh, we enjoyed it. So we went back up there then, uh, Christmas time, like we always did. <clears throat> Gloria said, we were, we were there one, one night. She said, Kenneth, I want to go home. I said, oh, what's the matter, babe? She said, I, I, I don't know in my spirit I'm, I'm done with this house. I said, you know, I, I believe it's the thing to do. <laughs> so, and I walked, I went back up there then and stood out there in the driveway of the house and put my hands on it. And I blessed it. I said, house, I bless you. You have, you, you, you were here. My grandchildren learned to ski here and all that. I bless you house. And I bless you to someone else. And I turned around at the driveway it goes up like that. I turned around and I said, there will be a man and his wife and they will drive down that driveway and they'll walk in the front door and they'll say, this is it. Well, a real estate agent there called me. He said, uh, I have some people looking at this house. He said, I think they're going to buy it. Well, they did. So I went up there and come to find out they're very strong Catholic people, two little girls. And so I was standing there and I said, now look, I stood right there on that wall and, and I pointed to the driveway and I said, there's a man and his wife that are going to come in here and walk in the front door and say, this is it. She started laughing. She looked at him and looked at me and she said, that's exactly what we did. <laughs> and she said, we just, that's exactly what we did. I said, well, there was a doctor that tried to buy it and he said, yeah, but it wasn't his. <laughs> It wasn't his. I spoke to the house. I'm talking about the laws of prosperity. Yes. I spoke, yes. hey, right. yes. spoke to that house and blessed it, spoke to the Lord and thanked him for it for all these years and said what I believed. And I went back up there and met those two little girls. And one of them, I got down there on my, my knees and got in front of her. And she started laughing. And so I reached over and I said, and I said, ma'am, she said, yeah, but she doesn't usually like anybody. And so I, and then I talked like Donald Duck to her for a little bit, you know, <laughs> and got her perfect. And I said, the Lord loves you, baby. And I picked her up and she just started smiling and I picked her up in my arms and they said, she never does that. <laughs> so then I checked in with the 700 club <laughs> and saw to it that those little girls had lifetime members of Superbook. Aww. Well, there's a lot down there behind that house. It was a huge lot. We eventually had, and we saved up and saved up and bought silver and everything else. And, and finally silver went up enough. So we bought that lot down there. 
And I told him, I said, you know, you can just treat that lot like the man that had it, what we had it, man, he wouldn't let us even mow the grass down there. But I said, now you just treat that like it's your own. He said, yeah, but if anybody, if you, if anybody calls you about it, I'd like to have first refusal of it. I said, okay. So I got in the car one morning. I was driving from the house down about to the airport there and driving. And I got a text from him and I just stopped and I called him. And I told him, I said, now, Gloria, he kept telling me that if anybody builds a house right here, they're going to get right in my view. So he called me. Then I called him back. He said, well, Kenneth, it happened just like you said. Said so Michelle got to looking at that and said, Matt, you buy that lot. <laughs> she said, somebody's going to build a house behind our house, and I'm not having that. <laughs> Big electrical contractors in, in Denver. Well, he decided he could work from Steamboat Springs just as well as he could in Denver. He bought the lot. <laughs> For a whole bunch of money. <laughs> Lovely people. And I'm telling you, that lot, of course, now what is going on up there now? it's already worth more than he gave for it. Amen. 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 And in Steamboat, all the property's gone. People have bought it up. And now they live in the most prime piece of property up on the side of that mountain in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. And so I had enough money buy a little red V-tail bonanza. <laughs> Prosperity. You start off with nothing, but you keep straight, keep love in your heart. And later on, uh, the Lord said about that house up there, he spoke. I, I said, you th that Lord, I think we ought to buy that back. He said, Kenneth, now he said to me at the first place, he said, I want you to buy a house in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. And I'm going, because we were skiing up there. He said, I'm going to hold you responsible to be the keeper of this valley. He said, I want you to break the power of poverty over it and break the power of witchcraft over this valley. So Gloria and I did that. And we met excellent friends there. The biggest witch coven, coven in the United States had chosen Steamboat for their headquarters. Wow. And about 30 days after Gloria and I broke that power, they put out a publication. We believe that Steamboat Springs is just not for us at this time. Amen. So we were keepers of the valley. And the valley began to prosper. And prosper and prosper and prosper, the Yampa Valley. And then the Lord said, I heard Gloria when she said that standing out in front of that house. He said, it's always been hers. So I just expanded it and made a way for you to have it. <laughs> and you're still the keepers of this valley, spiritually. You see how it works? Mm. That was our covenant with God. Yeah. He helped us in the first place. Yeah. How could we have ever gotten $100,000 in the first place? Right. I'd never seen that much money at one time in my life. Mm. Ever. Mm. Ever, ever, ever. Mm. Sowing and reaping. Yes. Properties. Prosperity. Believed it. Stood on it still believing it, still standing on it. And it's just like it's what's happened in this convention. It's like a rising tide. And finally over a million people watching the convention. 
And I don't mind telling you, we way over this budget. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your body is healed tonight. And in the morning, I want you to know we're going to have healing school and we're going to see miracles in here. And I take authority over unbelief right now. And the power of the living God is in here now. This is a cathedral all this week. We dedicate it. When they came out here and set all of this up, they sent, sent me text of it and said, Sunday we occupy. Yeah. <laughs> we occupy the place and we bless the place and it becomes a cathedral unto Almighty God. Yeah. And whatever else they do in here is their business. But while we're here, this place is blessed and yeah. all the people that run it are blessed. Yeah. And one year they came and gave me a new pair of boots. <laughs> Said Fort Worth on them. <laughs> because of the Fort Worth Southwest Believers Convention. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've been yeah. doing it for 41 years. <laughs> and for 41 years, people have traveled around the world to get here, to get in this environment. Even when I preach too late, just like I'm doing right now. <laughs> Come here. Please. <laughs> Take this away from me. Well, let's see. Well, listen, I still got four minutes and 50 seconds. You want me? I think, no. I got it before Leroy honked his horn. <laughs> First one of those I ever had. We were doing 30 Days of Glory, and Leroy Thompson had one, and it, it went off, and that horn honked. And he's, you know, Leroy <laughs> said, we're going to hit a gusher, only he said it's a gusher. <laughs> Leroy Thompson. Well, got on the laws of prosperity and bought the land and built a church on the land where his grandfather had been a slave. And now there's a church there. And the little restaurant right here in Fort Worth, just a little ways over there from Polly High School. Terry learned how to pray from my mother. And so she'd go to this, it was called Weldon's Cafe. And, they'd, and, then, and then their cronies had come over after they closed up and they'd start drinking and <laughs> she'd pick out one of them and uh, go over there and sit by in the booth with them, start praying and lead them to the Lord. And Weldon said, well, <laughs> she's going to ruin my business, but that's all right. <laughs> and she'd just start leading them to the Lord. She's just a little girl. And she started leading him to the Lord. She kept on leading him to the Lord. And she kept on leading him to the Lord. And she kept on leading him to the Lord. And she kept on leading him to the Lord. Right now, today, where Weldon's Cafe was is now a church. And of course, we support that church. God is a faithful God. 